Discovery. DC Comics. Maybe it's because I just watched Death on the Nile. F*** that movie, by the way. But I can't help thinking this is some sort of an attempt to give us an origin story for Superman's f***ing colic, which is the very brief origin story of how I already hate this movie. We must hurry. The planet won't survive much longer. Krypton's destruction is quickly becoming the Batman's parents get shot in a Batman movie cliche of Superman films, and I'm not happy about it. My goodness, the planet is minutes from destruction, and this hatch is taking for ever to close, as if it's somehow in on all the drama as well. Also, you could have put some clothes on the kid. Seriously, did jor and Lar know how to parent? Like, at all? Does Crypto do his business from up here as well? Imagine driving along and a giant dog release hits your front windshield during morning traffic. How would that turn out? I'm guessing that would be a shit start to your day. As You're My Best Friend by Queen plays, I'm quickly realizing the music in this feature is going to have as much subtlety and nuance as a kryptonite-laced birthday cake addressed to Mr. S-Man from Booster L. Luther. Or a Minions movie. Other than to let the audience know what type of criminal they're stopping, why would Superman empty the stolen cash onto the middle of the f***ing road? Why not take that whole f***ing van to the cops and let them figure it out instead of leaving all this money up for grabs and causing a major traffic incident? Also, I can't believe anyone is dumb enough to rob a bank in f***ing Metropolis if Superman has been around and fighting crime for anything longer than a month. Pick literally any other city and your odds will increase, Mr. Bank Robber. Unless Superman and Crypto are making a perfectly seamless connection between these rails, that train is still going to be pulling and unbreakable the second it leaves those tracks. And I got you one of these from 43rd Street. Which I inexplicably stored in my f***ing pocket, mustard and all. Enjoy! It's Crypto the Super Dog. Okay, <laughs> you can have my potograph. Giving someone your potograph without explicit consent. He will never love anyone except for m oh. I love you. Considering Soups and Lois have been dating long enough for him to think about proposing, I'm not buying. This is the first time Crypto has heard these three words come out of Superman's mouth. You may think it's impressive that Crypto went to the effort of writing an imaginary newspaper for this imaginary future, but I say he should have tried harder, because if this part down here says that Superman and Lois are planning for a June wedding, why is this clearly a picture from a ceremony that has already happened? Maybe he'd be happier if he had a new friend too. Or you could teach him the value of enjoying his own company and finding comfort in, ah, f it. bring in Kevin Hart and let's get this over with already. Carl will try to flirt with Patty. Ooh, is that new perfume? It's cat pee. And have zero game. Giving this handsome K9 just enough time to pick the lock, yes. But you would have had even more time to pull this off if you weren't monologuing your plan to an unseen audience. I got my girl Merton running lookout. These papers don't miss a thing. We'll eventually be told that Ace and friends have been here for quite some time. So why is he still relying on Merton if he knows her poor eyes aren't up to the task? Also, that took barely 30 seconds to unlock. So why does he even need a distraction or lookout? Why isn't he trying this when she's asleep or in the bathroom or literally any other time she isn't there for 30 seconds? Don't you want to get adopted and feel the warm embrace of a middle-aged person who lives alone? That's just mean, like really f***ing mean and stereotypical. I'm not alone. Listen, kids are capable of being judgmental dickheads entirely of their own volition without movies giving them extra ammunition. No shelter lady watching our every move. Nope. It's a 100% animal farm. This line of dialogue just made me realize that George Orwell's League of Super Pets would have been a much better movie. All right, boy, I'll be right back. Leashing a dog that can f***ing fly to a post. I suppose that could be the joke. If it was, what are we trying to do here? Make Superman look dumb? Or does Superman know that Crypto knows to stay in disguise and not fly? And if that's the case, how exactly do they reach that f***ing accord? And why does he fly away in a few minutes? Ace here would be the perfect... How you feel about guinea pigs? How does she not see his ass escaping through this f***ing window a few feet away with all the noise and commotion he's making? He's literally barking at all the other animals right now. Let's just add five cents for all the bullshit ways this x-ray vision is selectively used throughout the movie or the random radiation exposure Superman and Crypto are giving to members of the public. Take your pick. My dookie doesn't stink. Wait, wait, time out. Are you serious right now? Yep. It actually smells like sandalwood. I'm actually very sad to say that this is in fact a case of sandalwood foreshadowing. Yep, the sandalwood smelling shit eventually makes a return visit. If Ace escapes as often as he does, why isn't this lock always on his cage? One of us is gonna get someone to snuggle with. I'm trying to think of how many people would either want or choose to have a pet pig in the city. And in fact, cities have limitations on what kind of pets you can own. And pigs rarely go on the list of allowable pets in metropolitan areas. I'm just saying there is at least a 69% chance that a pig being a household pet option in Metropolis is bullshit. Someone is dragging a meteor toward the city? <laughs> or Timmy could have fallen down that well again. It's hard to know when they don't have the doggy subtitles up. Also, f***ing Timmy, stay away from wells, you dick. Luthor. I'm not the first to make this point, but how does a man who has broken the law multiple times is clearly evil and has never once shown a single ounce of remorse for all the f 
fucked up shit he's done still have all this money in a goddamn building with his name on it. Next, you'll expect me to believe he's been elected president. Orange kryptonite will give me superpowers, you know, like uh, invisibility or uh, laser eyes. Or, or throwing playing cards really hard. Mark Marin is so great as the voice of Lex. I'm a little irritated we can't see him as a live version of Lex. Could we just go ahead and replace Kevin Spacey with him in Superman Returns? No? Well, then I will replace my sin removal with a sin addition. I'd expected you and that mud of yours much sooner. So Crypto is always with Superman on his missions? I don't remember that in the Snyderverse. By way of Christopher Nolan and Frank Miller's mutated creation that tried to be all Neil Gaiman and George Orwell, but came off more like a slightly darker Hardy Boy mystery. So clearly this is not canon. Oh yeah, I don't care about canon. Well, this is for making me think I did care about canon. Crypto, fetch! You're sending the f***ing dog to catch a meteor? I don't care if Crypto is capable of negotiating world peace. What the f*** else is Superman doing that's more important than saving the city from a meteor right now? Also, if Lex believes that orange kryptonite gives superpowers to humans, why is he dropping it on the city? Isn't he guaranteeing that the survivors will all get powers? Holy sh! this is how Marvel is bringing the X-Men into the MCU, isn't it? <laughs> Let's see if you can catch it now. If trapping them both in the tractor beam was an option all along, why didn't Luther do that straight away? <sighs> oh, great. Between this and basically every other animated feature this year, we're going to corrupt a new generation of filmmakers right from childhood that thinks these over-stylized, huge print character introductions are just the norm. Oh, it may seem innocent now, but just wait until 2042 when you see Mission Impossible Reborn, Resurrected, and Ready for Revenge, using them to introduce a geriatric Ethan Hunt and then see who's being overly nitpicky. Please fasten your safety belts. They are invisible. Yeah, none of this stuff is invisible. It's really more transparent. Crypto would be the superest at cinema sense. I miss my parents. We got dead parent jokes, yo. Who threw that kryptonite back into space? Sure, let's just throw the massive ball of superpower stones into deep space. I'm sure that won't come back to bite anyone later. Okay, fine, the tractor beam built by a guinea pig can lock onto a meteor in f***ing space and bring it all the way down to Earth, whatever. But if it's so powerful, how did this window remain intact until the meteor was pulled through it? Was the tractor beam just ignore glass for some reason? You see, when I was back in the lab. You see, when I was back in the land of Scoop! No! This is my home! And now this is your new home. It's kind of hard not to see this from Lulu's side. She was perfectly happy running tests with Lex until Superman and Crypto and all the other animals find their own new freedoms. Why is Crypto essentially kidnapping Lulu and forcing her to be put in another cage at the animal shelter? Orange kryptonite doesn't work on people. It only works on pets. Lulu was able to build this in a cage with a box of scraps. Also, it only works on animals, right? I mean, how would the kryptonite know if you were already someone's pet versus a wild animal? And if it was so specific to pets, then it wouldn't help Lulu since she's currently not a pet. Also, also, I don't care if Andy Serkis is playing a genius butler that's doing all the mental legwork for him. It's still insane that she managed to work out what the alien rock does. Also times three, orange kryptonite is some serious bullshit. Other than being technologically advanced, there's nothing special about Krypton or Kryptonians. The only reason Superman has powers is because of Earth's lower gravity and a different type of star giving him energy. Why would a rock left over from the destruction of Krypton have such a specific effect on life on Earth? What just happened? No, seriously, what just happened? I can't see that is approximately the 57th reference to Merton being half blind. Hope you're finding these references funny because there are approximately 1,236 more. Still working out the kinks. I didn't see anything. She did. And also taking baths instead of showers. That's your own filth you're scrubbing yourself in. You get that, right? Any sociopath who would microwave their tea or coffee. It is pie week. Wait a second there, buddy. You just said pretty dressed up for the British Bake Off. But you know what? It makes sense. This is the season finale. And while it's not beyond the realm of possibility that a pie is cooked during the finale, no one is referring to the season finale as pie week. My soggy bottom will not be pandered to by gratuitous bake-off references. You left Squeezy Bruce in the hallway again. I don't care how quietly he said it. Let's respect your buddy's secrets and not say Squeezy Bruce unless that chew toy is a Bruce Wayne and not Batman. Well, looky, looky what I got from the old lab. So Lex is currently in prison for the who knows how many time, and yet his lab still hasn't been raided for the stockpile of kryptonite he clearly still possesses? Help, crypto. Oh. My. God. How useless are these stools? I mean, f***ing Ant-Man couldn't fit his legs in this gap, let alone super quads over here. Those glasses aren't fooling anyone. This top button has been undone the whole goddamn time and all we've seen is skin. But now that we need an oh no Superman has been exposed moment, his costume is totally visible. Also, where is he hiding the f***ing cape? Is he just tucking that sh into his pants? How uncomfortable is that? Oh. 
Why does this always happen on date night? Saying this instead of worrying why her boyfriend has been thrown into a skyscraper. Sure, she's probably seen him go through worse, but she's gonna feel pretty bad when she realizes this threat actually wipes out the entire Justice League. You've reached the Justice League emergency line. For Earth 1, press 1. For Earth 2, press 2. Either this isn't Earth 1 and her Justice League number doesn't take her directly to the proper Earth right away, or she is on Earth 1 and she's getting exasperated about pressing the number 1 on her phone. I see someone found his medicine. A tiny shard of green kryptonite, cleverly concealed in a hunk of Jarlsberg. Let's talk about the villain's plan for a moment. Lulu hides kryptonite inside some cheese, and then hides that inside the squeezy Bruce. But this only works if Clark spots the toy and throws it back inside, and if Crypto decides to play with it and eat the cheese before he figures out that Soups is in trouble. It shouldn't have worked. Also, why does she choose to poison Crypto but just stab Superman? Of course, the answer is that the movie needs Crypto to be without his powers for a couple days, but she really should do the same to Superman, Kryptonite Cage or not. They always put it in the cheese. Well, if that's the case, why are you still eating surprise cheese? Yes, it is I, Dog L. Keith David plays a father and steals a movie he's only in for a couple of minutes with just a few lines cliche. You'd think that would be a sin removal, but this movie would be a million times better if he had more to do. It's not superpowers that make you a hero, Crypto. Maybe not only superpowers, but there is still quite a bit of superpowering needed to be a successful superhero. Guys, I think we might be overlooking the importance of the superpowers. You never forget your first time. We've got pink-hearted underwear jokes from the 50s, yo. When one has an abundance of power, <sighs> They have a certain duty to use that power to... Haha, <laughs> <laughs> look at the animated dog. He's peeing gag is a classic lesson taught on day one at the DreamWorks School of Animating Things. The sin here is that I can't decide if Warner Animation is sinking to this level or rising to it. Are you blackmailing me? No, I'm just asking you for something which I will reward you for by not revealing damaging information. And that would be blackmail. However, that's not what Crypto said. Crypto said, I'd be happy to take you and your friends to my farm if you help me save Superman. There's nothing mentioned in that arrangement about Crypto revealing that Ace lied about the farm. What Crypto just suggested was doing a favor for Ace, and in return, Ace and his friends will help out Crypto. That's not blackmail. That is a friendly request. I have come to recruit you for a siege of murderous savagery. That's true, then why is Lulu mostly focusing on smaller rodents? If she could give any animal superpowers, why isn't she at the Metropolis Zoo recruiting lions and gorillas? While the text reading wealthy person actually goes to jail is hilarious, Mumi clearly doesn't know how to newscast properly. There's no way that would be an actual statement a news program would have typed up, and I demand 100% accuracy in my animated films. These guineas, and the other super pets for that matter, get a random assortment of powers, whereas Lulu seems to get pretty much exactly the same powers as Superman. That's just a fluke of orange McGovernite and Oh boy, is Lulu lucky she didn't get something useless. Ah! Whoopi wimps out and cuts away before showing us Wonder Woman slicing up half a dozen household pets. Ah, I get it. The strong, silent type. While I do find turtles flirting with construction hats to be the 53rd most adorable animals flirt with inanimate object trope, I still feel annoyed that the movie thinks it has time for this. So many things to unpack here. First, the shitty TV is not a deal at $999. Second, the super rodents are dicks to big boy statues. And third, the Daily Planet has its own f***ing network? Who even reads the Daily Planet outside of Metropolis and the surrounding counties? Momentum doesn't immediately rip the Flash's legs from his ankles when his feet are suddenly encased in concrete because f*** you, Sir Isaac Newton. Also, if this is a live broadcast, how are they coming up with the captions before the event they're referring to has happened? Is that even how it works? I think my biggest problem with this movie is that it swings for these Deadpool-like meta jokes, but in just the laziest way possible and without a single care for how much it breaks the movie itself. Yes, I know this is a cartoon and cartoon logic will always trump logic logic, but go watch the Lego movie and then tell me this movie couldn't have tried harder. You want us to fight her? Chip brings up a great question and I'm just gonna go ahead and send the fact that these newly powered animals, along with Superman's dog, will eventually defeat a team of villains that the motherfucking Justice League couldn't even get close to beating. And they all have opposable thumbs! Does he not realize he has them too? My powers include heat vision, freeze breath, and don't forget the solar paw punch! Since we find out this power is only successful if it kills the one delivering it, why is PB so excited about this information? We gotta go! My goodness. Oh, f*** you, Lex Hamstor. They've only just arrived, so there's no f***ing way you knew they were coming when this oh my goodness started. While they end up being right about Ace being indestructible, they haven't really had an opportunity to test that theory out, so this works and it's all the bullshit. 
I mean, are they all fucking invulnerable then? I thought the plan was to land on poor Ace to cushion the fall, which wouldn't have saved them and would have also been sinned, but they didn't even do that. They took a huge dive, bailed on their cushion, and took the full brunt of the fall, including Crypto, who we know doesn't have any powers aside from sounding like Black Adam. I can't. Of course you can. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Using Dr. Pepper logic to motivate your electric squirrel friend. Sometimes I have to say the goddamn weirdest shit. He needs me. Does he? Because I'm pretty sure he's gonna get everything he needs from his fiance. But if Lulu's plan is to kill Superman, who she has already kidnapped, then he wouldn't be getting anything from anyone if her plan works out. So why does this f with crypto so much? You're lying. Well then why did this little bauble fall out of his under ruse the night I took him down? And she held on to the ring just so that she could use it in this moment to... What? Make Crypto stop fighting for Superman? The f does she care? He has zero power. How is he even an obstacle to her? Wherever Superman is, it's got nothing to do with me or my company, LexCorp International. Except Lois just showed you the guinea pig had a LexCorp emblem on her tag. So it clearly has something to do with LexCorp. He better get it together soon. Or those ferrets are gonna take over the world. I just realized this movie's plotline is if potential world disaster happens, the people slash heroes that are supposed to be able to fix it aren't able to, and a ragtag group of outsiders will be relied on to save the world instead. This movie is f***ing Armageddon with pets. Giving your dog and baby a bath in the same tub together. As we already discussed, baths are gross enough by themselves. Now you've got human and animal filth mixed, and that just can't be good. But it's okay because Ace saved her and the mom and dad will realize that, right? Right? Oh, what the f Warner Brothers? Why would you toy with my emotions like this? Here's a sin for making me feel things. You know what they say about dogs, don't you? We love unconditionally. But you do know what they say about dog movies. They hate every f***ing fiber of your being and will do anything they can to destroy your soul. I might be paraphrasing, but that was pretty much the Marley and Me tagline. I am really bad at this. That's just because you're still learning your powers. Yes, but two thirds of the movie in, and I'm sure the audience isn't alone in wishing that at least some progress had been made. They're gonna need a longer montage. And I'll be back with a bigger sin counter if this movie doesn't make my day and stop with the gratuitous pop culture references, because frankly, my pretty, I just don't give a damn about you or your little dog too. Rosebud. Invisible jet, yep. Ugh. Maybe put up a sign. Seriously, how has that not been done already? Did they just have superheroes bumping into it when they went up for their long drawn out roof talks? Bet they fucking did. Because all these superheroes are dicks. They might as well have introduced all of them biting into apples while cheating on the Kobayashi Maru test. No, that's my robot brother. Sympathetic robots with feelings are the seventh most irritating form of robot. They fall right between robots that like Snickers and robots that vote tea party. Out of the way, cat child. We have to get to strikers. Sorry, I can't do that. Lulu saved my life. Now I must take yours. But how the hell could Whiskers have known that this was the part of the city they would crash land in, let alone the exact f***ing alleyway? Come on, we're both grown-ups. Refusing to leave Garfield alone with your sexual advances, even though he is clearly trying to work right now. Even with powers, I'm nothing like Wonder Woman. Saturday Night Live cast member wants to be Wonder Woman cliche. None of you are turtles! This explains so much! But Merton clearly has enough vision to understand the shape and size of things close by. So there's no way she would think any of these animals, with the exception of maybe Chip, were turtles. Super pets, come out to play! References to the Warriors. That's what brings the kids out to movies these days. See you in heck! For Nates! I know stealing from Marvel is kind of the DCEU's whole shtick at this point, but this scene is still getting a sin for ripping off a much better speedster scene from a far superior movie. I really think a pet would be good for you. Suggesting someone do something because it's something you do and it works for you. Did he listen to the story Batman was actually telling? Because I don't think he did. Lulu, oh, I know you're hurting, but join our pack. What Dallas Cowboys fans say to other teams' fans when the Cowboys beat them somehow makes its way into the script. In 28 minutes, the entire Justice League is gonna go kaboom. If Lulu has the ability to kill all the Justice League, then why didn't she do that from the get-go? I know villains have to villain, but God damn it, This countdown to kill your arch nemesis when you could have killed them a long time ago bullshit has been done to death, revived a million times or so, and then done to death again. All because I was jealous of Lois. Who wouldn't be? Have you seen those bangs? Well, Merton would definitely have not been able to see Lois's bangs before she got the glasses, and she hasn't seen Lois since she got the glasses. Why is this dialogue? You're flying. What? I'm... My powers. I'm back. 
the kryptonite has left the dog. Yeah, but if he just passed a kryptonite shard without even realizing it, this dog has bigger problems than perceived abandonment issues. Assuming that destroying these control panels will automatically deactivate the force fields instead of leaving them locked in there forever. I'm sending him back to the place from whence he came from. So the countdown to the bomb is actually a countdown to a rocket containing a bomb, which conveniently gives Crypto one final opportunity to save the day. Honestly, do these villains ever actually want to win? You're up, kid. Open it like a can of tuna. Squirrel thing to the rescue. But how did he know where to zap this perfect circle so that it frees exactly the space where the Justice League is trapped? Well, I loosened it for you. But why can't he zap it again? Give me a reason to care. You know what my absolute favorite thing about Superman is? It's the fact that he's so overpowered that movies always have to find a way to write him out of the fucking story so the bad guys have a fucking chance, which means we rarely get to see him do anything super. It's just the best. Even if Ace was able to somehow save Crypto from this deadly punch, how did Lulu survive it? <coughs> Prenup. <coughs> Why? Clark isn't rich? Princess Diana of Themyscira. This pig being able to pronounce the Moscow Reunion when I cannot. She even put a ring on it. Is Chip suggesting that he and the Green Lantern are an item? Because that is a whole different kind of Super Pets movie. I got a hot date with two firemen's helmets. Spoiler alert, they're twins. This is a kid's movie. Well, at least since this is an animated superhero film, there won't be a post credit sting. Damn it! Well, at least it's unlikely to contain a post post credit scene that prevents theater staff from cleaning the double damn it! When this whole thing is over, we're gonna find a location, and I'm gonna knock your teeth so far down your throat, you're gonna stick a toothbrush right up your ass to brush them. Hey, Lord of the Flame. Your tail's on fire. I'm sorry, my what is who? Why does this always happen on date night? Believe it or not, George isn't at home. Father, look inside yourself, Simba. You are more than what you have become. You must take your place in the circle of life. Are you okay? Veronica and I are trying this new fad called uh, jogging. I believe it's jogging or yogging. It might be a soft J. How much did you have to drink? Let me tell you my story, man. Last year, I was insane for this crazy little eighth grade bitch. What's this farm called? The farm upstate. That sounds made up. Who was made up? Oh, you want the truth? Son, we live in a world that has walls. If you're my best friend, I shouldn't have to ask you to lie for me. I shouldn't have to ask your permission for me to put you in my lie. You know why? Because you're my best fucking friend, bitch. One, two, Chip, we all go to dark places. I thought about throwing Lois Lane in the ocean. Well, you're a sh** of motivation. Super pets, come out to play. Warriors, come out to play. Yeah.